Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing? Yesterday was a very, very long day. A lot happened. You know, they say that you get used to stuff like this. I think you just get familiar with it. I don't think you ever get really get used to it. You just get familiar with the process. And uh, right back to the same old... I mean, I don't think even think we even got out of the tired state. We're right back into it again. I don't know. Oh well, it's nice to be able to do this. It's uh, it's really it really is, you know, a, a privileged activity to be able to do what we're able to do uh, to make somebody more comfortable at the end of their life. And here we get to do it twice back to back. So I shouldn't complain too much, uh, but yeah, it does get tiring and it does get taxing on the system. Uh, this morning, we're going to be reading out of Song of Solomon 2-3. Basically, what I'm saying is we could definitely use your prayers to strengthen us to keep going. This morning, we're going to read out of Song of Solomon 2-3. His fruit was sweet to my taste. Like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down in his shade with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. And we know that that um, the Song of Solomon is the book when you read it and you, you stop and think about what what's being said here you start to see some similarities with the language used from Jesus towards the church and so you start to realize this is a love letter from Jesus to the church and it tells us a lot there's a lot of secrets hidden in this book that haven't been discovered yet a lot of them and I like going back to this book because sometimes we, 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 will, we will discover some of those new things every now and then. We'll start in verse 1. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. Like a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. Like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down in his shade with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Sustain me with cakes of raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am lovesick. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand embraces me. So the, the language being used here, you can go out throughout the Bible and find out what these things typically refer to or are used to refer to in other parts of the Bible, come back to this book and look at them and you get a completely different story than what's on the surface. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by the does of the field, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. Why is until capitalized? That seems weird to me. I wonder if it means something. So yeah, there's a lot in this book. <coughs> Faith in the scripture is spoken of under the emblem of all the senses. It is sight. Look unto me and be ye saved. It is hearing. Hear and your soul shall live. Faith is smelling. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia. Thy name is as ointment poured, poured forth. Faith is spiritual touch. By this faith, the woman came behind and touched the hem of Christ's garment, and by this we handle the things of the God of the good word of life. Faith is equally the Spirit's taste. How sweet are thy words to my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my lips. Except a man eat my flesh, saith Christ, and drink my blood, there is no life in him. This taste is faith in one of its highest operations. One of the first performances of faith is hearing. Now, think about the taste one, because this is interesting. Um, there's references in there talking about, you know, people that have tasted the gifts of, of the Lord and then denied him in the book of Hebrews. They've tasted the goodness of the Lord and then denied him. You know, how can they be brought back to repentance? So there's a lot to what he's saying here because it's all over the Bible. And when you start to read that and see that language after hearing this, and we're like, wait a minute, there is, here's that, here's the, those, those very direct intimate references that get into the finer details. Because when you taste something, there's more detail in it. 
It's one thing to know something tastes good. It's another thing to actually taste it. We hear the voice of God, not with the outward ear alone, but with the inward ear. We hear it as God's word, and we believe it to be so. That is the hearing of faith. Then our mind looketh upon the truth as it is presented to us. That is to say, we understand it. We perceive its meaning. That is the seeing of faith. Next, we discover its preciousness. We begin to admire it and find how fragrant it is. That is, faith in its smell. Then we appropriate the mercies which are prepared for us in Christ. That is, faith in its touch. Hence, follow the enjoyments, peace, delight, communion, which are faith in its taste. Any one of these acts of faith is saving. To hear Christ's voice as the sure voice of God in the soul will save us. But that which gives true enjoyment is the aspect of faith wherein Christ, by holy taste, is received unto us, or into us, and made by inward and spiritual apprehension of his sweetness and preciousness to be the food of our souls. It is then we sit under his shadow with great delight and find his fruit sweet to our taste. <coughs> Sorry, my son is going crazy this morning. Each one of us has experienced these aspects. That's why we're saved. That's why we're here. We've come to a much broader, detailed understanding of what the Lord is doing. Before we were saved, we had no understanding. After we were saved, we realized, okay, this is what I've been looking for. This is what I want. You know, and, and all these things go together. If you've never had Turkish delight, it's a it basically it's a little cube of Jello, but it, it's the way it's made and what it's made out of that makes it really good, it's surprisingly good. Um, you hear about it, you see it made, you see videos on it and stuff, but you've never had it, and so you hear about it and you're like, okay, that actually looks really good. You hear about people talk about how good it is, then you get to finally experience it process of salvation does a very similar thing we hear then we start to see then we start to you know feel certain things and then we start to taste these things you know all of it leads all of they all of them work together because you see that really good looking fruit you hear about it you start to understand more about it and then you get to taste it and you realize this is what you want. It's the same thing with the Lord. When I come into that relationship with the Lord, we hear, we see, we, we sense and know more about it. And then we get to taste it and see. And, and that tasting is literally what, I mean, I, I use my life as an example. It's literally what we've been going through these last couple of months. It, it's a, it's a wash of waves and billows going over us. It's a, it's a bunch of stuff coming at us all at one time. And yet the taste of the grace of God and the grace of Jesus Christ is all over it. The fruit of answer to prayer is present everywhere in my own personal situation. And so I can taste that the Lord is good because I can taste the fruit of what he's bringing out of these situations. A greater sense of love, a greater love and compassion towards fellow human beings. A, a sense of privilege that we get to do something like this. A lot of people say, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Why do I have to be charged with this? Why is this such a burden? But I don't see it that way. I realize that, and, it, it, and it, really, it is a burden. It's a good burden. Because it is a privilege, it, it is such a, a grace and a mercy to be able to do what we're doing right now. For my, now, for my father, just just recently, it's funny because all the same people that came before for my mother-in-law are all the same people coming again. And uh, I think that's by design because they're all busy. They do other stuff. We're not the only people that are doing this. And yet, we, all, we got the exact same people. That, that's the Lord's doing. That's 100% the Lord's doing. So I can see that fruit that he is bringing 
I can taste that the fruit is good. I, I personally, in my personal situation here, to just this one, I'm witnessing all these things that this devotion is talking about. Full color. Each one of our lives, every single one of you, is having a very similar experience. Not in the activity or in the, the situation that I'm in, but in the experience of the Lord working in your own life and in those situations. And so you too are partaking of the fruit of the Lord in those situations you're dealing with. Why me? You know what I'm talking about. It's been happening in your home for oh quite a while now. Mary, you know what I'm talking about. And that's just a couple of the names. All of you who have commented about that, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you're experiencing it real time. We've just never heard it put in these words. So now whenever you read the Bible and you see stuff like this and hear those words being spoken, tasting, hearing, singing, it's going to stir up memories. It's going to, the, the understanding is being sharpened concerning these things. We start to see the Lord more. We start to understand more. We start to grow more because of knowing these things. The Lord is giving us more understanding. He's giving us a greater insight. He's answering my prayer. I pray that we would learn more about him, know more about him, more deeply understand him. And that's what he's doing. Amazing. And this goes back to what I said before about how we perceive situations as being a negative. Don't necessarily look at it that way. Stop and look at it for a minute and go, wait a minute. What's the Lord doing here? Because I know everything works for the good of those that love God. I love my God. What is he doing here? There's something good that will come out of this. We're just more and more, we're getting that understanding sharpened. So that we can see it with a much finer edge. And know what it is. And rejoice in the Lord. Praise the Lord and give thanks to him. It is worthy of those things. So don't, don't focus on the, the situation, this negative, anything like that. Focus on what the Lord is doing. Focus on the, the fruit being born from that. Because in these situations we have no control over, the Lord bears fruit through us. It's an amazing thing. It's an incredible thing. I never cease to be amazed at how everyday things that challenge us, especially the things that challenge us, suddenly with this understanding and the more understanding we get, suddenly those things take on a much different picture. They take on a much different value. There's great value in, in these, these scenarios and these situations that we experience in our lives every day. And, and look, you get tired. I was very tired, very frustrated, very overwhelmed yesterday. I'm very, I slept, I'm very tired today. This next week, it's gonna be a very overwhelming day. We got back-to-back -back nurse visits. I've got doctor's appointments. And I mean, it, it's, it, it's a lot. There's a lot, you know, right back to that schedule, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I love it. I love everybody that's coming. I look forward to seeing them. But it's tiring. I want life to be quiet again. But you know what? It's okay. Because I'm learning more about my Lord. I'm, I'm seeing more of his hand in these situations. And it's teaching me more about him. And therefore, it's teaching me to be more like him. To show more compassion. To be more willing and more ready to help. And to use the abilities and the resources that I have to help others as much as I can. It's a beautiful thing to be a part of it. It's even more beautiful to see what it's bringing about and understand how it works. And the Lord, I believe, is giving us a little bit more of a look into that. And each one of us in our own personal lives has some scenario or has had some scenario or is soon to have some scenario that will show them these exact same things.
I love that he's telling us this in these devotions. And, and here we're, we can see it too. So see, hear, and taste that the Lord is good. Enjoy that goodness, his goodness. Let him, let him have his way in how he runs things. And watch the development before your very eyes. The perfect work that he does. Of his hand working in your life and the lives of those around you. Because the rest of the world doesn't get to see that. Only we do. That in and of itself is also a privilege. That we get to see the hand of the Lord working. What, what an amazing thing. Not something to be looked down upon. Not something to be taken lightly. But something to be openly talked about. A blessing. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word, and thank you for this devotion. It is a beautiful, beautiful day when we can come to a place where we gain a little more understanding. You are answering that prayer that I had. That even when we're when I'm tired, even when I'm I'm overwhelmed, even when I'm stressed out, even, even when I just want to stay in bed all day. Um you are giving us new insights. You're inspiring us to get up and, and engage the day. You, 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 you give us this drive and desire to want to see, know, hear, and, and more, and to taste more of the fruit that you're bearing through us. To taste and see that you are good. And we can understand that these things have much deeper meaning than what we originally thought. And now that we see it, now the more we read the Bible, the more stuff was going to now jump off the page. Things that we looked over before where these words were being used and now they have a different meaning. And so we look at that and we gain. We look at our lives and the individual things we can do every day and certain scenarios fall into this category and we gain, we grow, and we give you the glory. More opportunities for us to give you glory. Lord, I'm not going to pretend that I understand it all. I'm not going to pretend that I know it all. I don't. I'm not going to pretend that I have attained anything. I haven't. But the one thing I do know, and the one thing I can speak on with great confidence, the one thing I can boast in it is you and your work on the cross and your work in my life personally. I can see what you've done and what you're doing. I can hear about it and I can know it and understand it. And all those things together, I have a taste of what your goodness is. And the more I look at what's going on right now, the more I look at what went on in the past, the more I look at what possibly is gonna go on in the future, that taste develops even more. The, the fruit is sweeter. The fruit that you were bearing through me and through those around me is sweeter. The more I understand it, the more it makes sense, and the more I can glorify you for it. Lord, give us this testimony. Make us to be able to do this. Each one of us as a, as a born-again believer to, to be able to rejoice in you, to have the peace that defies all understanding, even in the worst situations. But to be able to glorify you, praise you, and give thanks to you for everything. Because even when we're tired, I'm barely able to keep my eyes open right now. Even when we're tired, even when we're overwhelmed, even when we're stressed out, even when everything seems like it's going wrong, you're still there working. It's just up to us to look and see your hand working. Lord, give us a view of your hand working. Give, make us to see so that the more we see, the more we know, the more we hear, the more we understand. And we have all those things that we can taste that you are good, that what you're doing is good, and that it is a blessed thing for us to be in the situations that we're in because we know that there's going to be a perfect outcome from it because it's you doing it. Lord, give us strength to endure to the end. Give us all understanding, all wisdom, and all knowledge according to your will for each one of us. Give us peace that defies all understanding, joy inexpressible. Give us a reason to give thanks to you, a reason to praise you and glorify you. 
And Lord, may we taste that your fruit, the fruit you bear in us is good. The fruit that you are bearing in others is good. May we taste that you are good and walk in that. And where we can share it with others, maybe they'll come to faith too, because they'll see it. May we be living examples, living sacrifices uh, of these things. May we show these things forward to the rest of the world so that they can be blessed too. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. I'm very sorry. I apologize. I'm so tired. And uh, it, it takes a little bit to get going in these videos. But um, I thank you all in advance for your prayers. Guys, even in these situations, the Lord is working. We see him working. The fact that you hear me speak these words and you're like, that's literally what I'm, what I've been going through. That's literally what's going on here. This, this make, makes so much sense to me. This is a direct response to something I have. That's, that shows the Lord is working. Every single aspect of our lives, the Lord is working in. I've come to the understanding that sometimes he puts us in scenarios that make us tired, that wear us down, so that when a certain situation may pop up, our response is much different than if we were fully rested. See, if you're fully rested and all your have all your faculties at play, you may have a much more negative response to a scenario than if you're tired and exhausted and worn out then your, your response may be more passive, <clears throat> more loving, more understanding. It's different. It's always different. And, and I always notice that it's different. And, and I see the Lord working. Sometimes in, like in the, my current state, sometimes it makes you more resolute. And that could be the proper response to a particular situation. Either way, either way it works out, we see the Lord working in everything. I, I see him working in everything more and more. And that every day goes by, I see him working in everything. And it's beautiful. My responses won't always be perfect. The way I think about things won't always be perfect. My emotional response may not be perfect, but he is always perfect. And so whatever he's doing, no matter what I'm doing, it's always going to bear good fruit. And I'm glad it's that way. Because then it teaches me to recognize that fruit, to taste that fruit, and to taste that he is good and that what he is doing is good. So that I can come to that understanding of, okay, I may not understand what's going on here or why this is happening, but the Lord is working in it and it's going to work out for my good. You see the connection? It, it will all work out for our good. For those that love God. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus name and I'll see you in the next video.